I was raised to believe people should treat each other right, but a lot of the times they don't. Why won't you take care of your customer? What part of your job's done didn't you understand? Well, see, because you don't tell me my job's done. You're not a real taxi. Can you tell us? I'm a taxi. They'll lie, cheat, and steal from you. Sir, we'd like to talk to you about possible prosecution for selling a stolen car. They think nobody cares. Okay, turn the camera off right now. I care, and that's why I trust Dale investigates. I'm consumer investigator Dale Cardwell. Have you ever locked your keys in your car and had to call a locksmith, only to wind up feeling set up and ripped off? Well, you may just owe it to this man. Mr. Amram, we'd like to talk to you about your bait and switch tactics with your locksmith company. Yegel Amram owns GA Lock and Key, a company Joanne Thomas and her teenage son Evan got to know completely by accident. He just got a job at a transmission place and they trusted him enough to use the company truck and deliver something and he somehow locked the keys in the car. Quick, what would you do? Probably the same thing Evan did. Pulled out his phone, searched the word locksmith and called the first one that came up, GA Lock and Key. He clicked, called and uh, they said it would cost $25 to come out, 15 minutes. Evan had no idea he was being sucked into a con. It begins with that promise for prompt service. Okay. But the worst was yet to come. When they got here, it was more like $325 to unlock it. How does a $25 estimate turn into a $325 ripoff? It's a surprisingly simple scheme with huge returns for the scam artists. So how much uh, is it going to be? So yeah, parallel makers of the vehicle um, to unlock the vehicle, basically the type of tools you use and mechanism is 300 uh -huh. plus a service called 25. Excuse me? 300? Mm -hmm. Next on Trust Dale Investigates, we turn the tables on the locksmith and you get to watch him squirm. Excuse me, I'm Dale Cardwell with Trust Dale TV. How are you? I have no idea. But what we ultimately uncover about this locksmith company is unconscionable. Yeah. The phone call came from her best friend's mother, uh, which was blood curdling, to say the least, because she couldn't tell me what happened other than there's been an accident. Welcome back to Trust Dale Investigates. So far, we have a locksmith, a ripped off teenager, and grieving parents. How are they all linked? But first, let's uncover how this bait and switch ripoff works. Locksmith? Uh, hi, I, uh, I locked my keys out of my car and I, I kind of wanted to get a price from you guys. Our Trustdale Investigates undercover team called GA Lock and Key posing as a stranded motorist. Listen to what the dispatcher says. What's the fee on that? I, I need to know the fee first. The service fee is 25, sir. The unlock starts at 30. And I'll have my technician give you a call right back, sir. All right, thanks. The technician did call, but it was tough to get a straight answer. What's the price on, on that? I don't know. I need to see what they need to do over there. Yeah, can you give me an estimate, a quote on the phone? I need to see what kind of look you're over there. Notice how fast he's talking and how you can't understand what he's saying? Experts tell us that's deliberate. Here's some advice from a legitimate locksmith, Kevin Wilson. You don't want to fall into the trap of being quoted just the, the call out charge and wait for them to get done before you know the final price. So we did push for a final price, and when the locksmith arrived, that's what we paid. Oh my gosh. Is it 75 and 25? Yeah. Okay. One hundred dollars, which experts say is a fair amount to pay. But what if you don't push for a final price? How much is this going to run? Um, the service fee for the technician to come out is $25, and the unlock starts at 30 It's based on the car, but I'm going to let them know exactly what type of car that you're driving, okay? Wait, back that up and slow it down. It's based on the car, but I'm going to let them know exactly what type of car that you're driving, okay? Our expert says that's misleading. Any locksmith should be able to quote an exact price for most services, especially a car lockout. 
But listen what happens when the locksmith arrives, unlocks the door, and hands us the bill. So how much is it going to be? So yeah, parallel lock makers and vehicle um, to unlock the vehicle. Basic type of tools you use and mechanism is 300 uh -huh. plus a service called 25. Excuse me? 300? Mm -hmm. This is where most of these ripoffs end, with frustration and a sense of helplessness. But not this time. Well, let's find out if we can drill down to the bottom of this. That's our team confronting this GA lock and key locksmith just seconds after he thought he would make off with our dough. Excuse me. I'm Dale Cardwell with Trust Dell TV. How are you? Good, you? Great. Can you explain to us why Georgia Lock and Key is charging her $325 to unlock a very similar model that you charged $100 for the day before yesterday? There is a Georgia and then there's a GA Lock and Key, so there's two different ones. What you're hearing now is the final leg of the con. When a consumer gets angry after the fact and calls the locksmith to demand a refund, the company pretends it's being confused with a competitor, Georgia Lock and Key. But we knew through our research the company uses both names. We really, really know what we're doing. We know who you are and we know where all these phone calls go. So we've, she needs to explain to us why this was $325, day before yesterday was $100. Yes, I called the number that's right on his Yeah, it's, it's the number lock. right here on, on your car. I have no idea. Like I said, I'm just a technician. I have no idea. Okay, well, you can lock the keys back in the car because you're not getting $325. Okay. Hundreds saved this time, but how much has been lost? Raina um, is missed. I think the one thing I was able to tell someone once is the sound in my home is so quiet that it's loud. That's how quiet it is without her. When we come back, follow us on the hunt for the man behind GA Lock and Key and see what happened when a lockout turned lethal. Mr. Amram, we'd like to talk with you, sir. We'd like to talk to you about Julianne and Raina, the two young girls that died. Welcome back to Trustdale Investigates. May 25th, 2014, 23-year-old Garrett Anderson locks his keys in his car at this Marietta Walmart. He searches his phone and calls GA Lock and Key. Ashley Merchant is Anderson's attorney. And then when he gets out there, the locksmith says, oh, all of a sudden it's going to be double. It's going to be more than what, what we quoted you, which was not a reasonable fee. And so I think that that was a, some type of a scam. Three miles away, 15-year-olds Raina Asalam, Juliana Farrell, and 16-year-old Monica Epps were walking down Barrett Lakes Boulevard. Raina's father, Akil, says it was just like any other Saturday. I believe that they were uh, stopping by the store to get some snacks for the movies and they were coming back before they were going to the movies uh, when the accident happened, yes. It happened on the sidewalk off to my right uh, when uh, two men were racing down this road involved in a business dispute over $175. Police have arrested and charged a man from Atlanta named Tanzu Kanlika, losing control of his vehicle here, then uh, driving it up on a sidewalk where three girls were walking. What you're about to hear is the actual 911 call locksmith Tanzu Kanlika made to Cobb County as he chased Garrett Anderson around this curb and hit the three girls. Be warned, the audio may be disturbing. Cobb, 911, what's the location emergency? Hi, uh, I Hello. am on a uh, highway, uh, Cobb Parkway. I'm a locksmith and uh, he's trying to escape from me. He didn't want to pay. He told me he's going to ATM. I'm following him. He's just making U turns, make a, take a left, take a right. He's just playing games with me. Okay. Well, sir, you wh where do you work at? I am on. Uh, no. No. Next week. No. I said, where do you work at? Uh, I work at GA Locksmith Company. At where? At Locksmith Company. Where's that at? It's a GA locksmith. It's a what? GA locksmith. A locksmith? Yes. Okay. And what is your name? Hello? Hello?
The phone call came from her best friend's mother, um, which was blood curdling, to say the least, because she couldn't tell me what happened other than, you know, there's been an accident and, and get here. Fifteen-year-old Raina Asalam dies at the scene. Her best friend, Juliana Farrell, goes to the hospital in critical condition. We buried Raina, and on the way back from the uh, cemetery, we got the phone call saying that Juliana had passed. Close friend Monica Epps survives the impact, but is permanently injured. So many lives are ruined over what started as a scam that Mr. Anderson, quite frankly, was not a part of. Merchant says Anderson had left the scene to get the extra money from an ATM. A jury, however, concluded he was running. Today, Garrett Anderson is serving 15 years in prison for leading the chase. The locksmith, Tanzu Kanlika, was sentenced to 20 years for hitting the girls and leaving the scene. This is dash cam video captured by Cobb County Police. There's a Nissan 350Z and like the whole side of this car is smashed in. And I don't know if he's driving away from like a wreck or something. Yeah, it actually we had someone that just left the scene of an accident. They find Kanlika several miles away from the accident. His car crippled from the impact. So it's going to be a silver Nissan 350Z. That's Kanlika's boss, Yegel Amram, on the right. You'll remember him from earlier in our story. He's the owner of GA Lock and Key. He's helping him remove his locksmith equipment from the car. When police pull up, weapons drawn. Once the cuffs are on, Listen as Kanlika tries to downplay his boss's involvement. So he just came to help me. I don't know what's going on right now. Watch as Amram looks directly into the police car dash cam and smiles. Could it be he knows these police officers have no idea that his company's bait and switch tactic triggered the deadly chase? Kanlika was taken into custody that evening. Amram was released at the scene and never charged with any crime. We dug deep into the customer experience history of GA Lock and Key and found the company not only has an F with a Better Business Bureau, but carries dozens of complaints from consumers who claim they too were tricked with a bait and switch price, something unknown to Raina's parents until now. How would you feel if I told you we've discovered GA Lock and Key has been perpetrating this scam day in, day out, ever since your daughter's death? If that were the case, it would be very unfortunate that someone else's family might be put in the same position and situation. They have two beautiful, vibrant girls gone, and this practice is still going on. That's unfathomable. Yael Amram actually told us that this happened a long time ago. We should get over it, that it's old news. Then, um... It's never old news for us. It will never be old news for us, uh, for our family, uh, Raina's friends, Juliana's friends, uh, who think about them every day, uh, to our kids, who still today uh, still have problems coping with Raina's death. It will never be old news to us. Because Amram never stopped and other lives are at risk, we took our findings to the Georgia Attorney General's office. It opened its own investigation, confirmed the facts, and found him in violation of the Fair Business Practices Act. It also ordered him to cease and desist and fined him $322,000. The AG declined, however, to prosecute Amram criminally or put his company, GA Lock and Key, out of business. Even if they did, it's unlikely that would stop him because we found Amram associated with dozens of different locksmith sites that could show up on your phone if you were locked out and needed help. So for someone to be able to walk away and they were what started it all, I I'm troubled that that's the community and the society that we're living in. Raising the question, can anyone stop Yegel Amram? We believe that it's inappropriate, we believe that it's wrong, and we believe it's illegal, and we will do something about it. Still to come on Trustdale Investigates, what can be done about GA Lock and Key? 
And what does the mysterious man who owns the company have to say when we confront him about his business practices? We'd like to talk to you about Julianne and Raina, two young girls that died because your locksmith was chasing another car. Mr. Amram, we'd like to talk to you about your bait and switch tactics with your locksmith company. Yegel Amram is accused of running a company that quotes a low price over the phone. He clicked, called, and uh, they said it would cost $25 to come out, 15 minutes. Only to shock the customer with a bill often 10 times higher. So how much is it going to be? So yeah, car lot makers and vehicle, it's 300 uh -huh. plus a service called 25. Excuse me? 300? That tactic, sprung on Garrett Anderson May 25, 2014, caused him to flee the scene where his unlock took place because court records show he didn't have enough money to pay the higher bill. GA lock and key technician Tanzu Kanlika gave chase, as depicted in this simulated police video used in court. As he pursues Anderson, Kanlika loses control of his Nissan 350Z, hitting three teenage girls as they were walking down the side of the road killing Raina Asalam, critically injuring her best friend Juliana Farrell, and maiming Monica Epps. What struck me was the reality that it wasn't an accident, that it was a conscious decision that someone made that had a horrible impact. I would hope that law enforcement and our legislators would, would consider taking some action that everyone has to be accountable. I mean, that's one of the things that we preach in our firm is that we are about accountability. It's a request we took to Cobb County District Attorney Vic Reynolds. In looking at this case to, to, at this point, and, and in all candor with great help from, from your folks and what you all did in digging up this, this history, you know, we believe that it's inappropriate, we believe that it's wrong, and we believe it's illegal, and we will do something about it. Reynolds says that could include multiple criminal charges, beginning with theft. But charging him is one thing, finding him altogether different. GA Lock and Key lists its address as 3833 Peachtree Road, Suite 1013. Nobody answers, but our investigation shows that the other company using the same bait and switch scheme, Georgia Lock and Key, claims to be operating in a suite in this building on Glen Ridge Drive. There's no locksmith company here. Coming up, watch the extraordinary circumstances in which we were able to track down Yegel Amram and confront him about his egregious business practices. How much money have you made off this over the years? And learn what these parents are doing to honor their daughter's memories when Trustdale Investigates returns. Yegel Amram is accused of running a scam where unsuspecting car owners who find themselves locked out are duped into paying 10 times more than they expect when his technician arrives and unlocks the car. You'll find complaints about this tactic in dozens of internet posts, but Amram himself could not be found until this day. After years of dodging court dates to face charges on a 2014 DUI, Amram finally showed up, but was completely unprepared for this showdown. Mr. Amram, we'd like to talk to you about your bait and switch tactics with your locksmith company. It's likely he never imagined that his business model would ever be exposed, and even less likely he'd be held accountable for its impact. Get in front of him. Mr. Amram, we'd like yeah. to stop and talk with you. Amram refused to answer our questions, but he couldn't escape them. Mr. Amram, would you please stop and talk with us? Mr. Amram, what about the two young girls that died because of your locksmith? Yes, you do, because you were sued for it. Amram walks blindly into traffic, trying to flee our cameras. But his victims deserve answers. Do you train your locksmiths in the bait and switch method? Do you train them? The dispatcher says it's going to be $30 to come out, and then your locksmith arrives and tells the <laughs> consumer it's going to be $330.
How much money have you made off this over the years? You know, you kept doing it after two girls were killed in a car accident, but it wasn't really an accident because your locksmith was chasing one of your victims. You know, the parents of those two girls that died didn't know that you were doing this as a scheme. They thought it was an accident. They had no idea that you'd been doing it for years and that you continued to do it after two girls died. We discovered Amram is 40 years old, a citizen of Israel here in the U.S. on a work visa. Investigators believe he may have ties to similar locksmith operations across the country, as far away as Texas and Colorado, none of which he's willing to discuss. Do you see the girls' faces at night when you try to sleep? How do you feel about that? Mr. Amram, why won't you talk to us about it? Can you sleep at night? That's what I want to know. Does it keep you up? Amram sped away, but he can't escape the scrutiny of the Cobb County, Georgia District Attorney. Vic Reynolds has subpoenaed Amram's bank and phone records, and he's working to determine just how deep and far this will go. When we confronted Mr. Amram, he told us that this was old news and that people needed to just get over it. It's very upsetting to me. As I said a moment ago, we had two young individuals in this county who lost their lives. We had a third young individual who was seriously injured. Those families, the community that cared for those individuals, don't simply get over something like this. And I promise you that the Cobb DA's office doesn't get over it either. An arrest and conviction would deliver some measure of justice for the parents of Raina, Juliana, and Monica. Uh, our first speaker this morning is going to be uh, Miss Barbara Jackson. Today, these remarkable families have turned their grief into grace, establishing and awarding what they call Reigning Hope Scholarships for college-bound seniors. Jane Farrell is Juliana's mother. A positivity turns something negative into a positive so that we can all benefit from it. There's nothing we can do about our children being gone, but who's to say that we can't help benefit other children? It brings me a level of joy and, and comfort to know uh, that we can still give despite uh, the pain that it caused, that there is still something of value even in her death, and we have to find that. Um, we can't stay in a state of, um, of depression or a state where we're not fruitful. Um, then her life would have been in vain. No, I, it, it makes me happy to know that her life has given life to other things. And it will. And we will continue following this evolving story, including Garrett Anderson's attempts to get a new trial based in part on the evidence we uncovered. We'd also like to know if this scam has ever happened to you or someone you love. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time. Trustdale Investigates. Thank you.